Thank you. Glad to be here. Um, it took a lot to get here. I don't know if you were following my adventures yesterday uh, with the travel plans and all that, but I think I visited most of the major cities between here and Cincinnati, including a few that are actually in between. So I don't normally do shout outs, but today I am. If it weren't for travel man Phil, I think he literally bent time and space to get me here. So big thanks to Phil. So why do I want to talk about Rake? Rake has been around since oh, about 2004 or thereabouts. 2003, I think, was actually the RubyConf where I first gave a presentation on Rake. Actually, my very first presentation at a Ruby event. But what I've noticed is that a lot of people who use Rake uh, come to Rake through the Rails community and they see Rake as just an easy place to dump scripts into and don't really understand what Rake is giving you, the advantage that Rake uh, provides to you. So I want to talk a little bit about this. Now I'm doing this in two parts. The basic Rake, our Rake boot camp, I did at Rails conference, and that was uh, just some simple things. And then this one is a power Rake. So this is more advanced, so I'm assuming you know a little bit about Rake, and we'll cover exactly what that is. But I want to demonstrate first some of the misconceptions about Rake. And here's exhibit A. <laughs> I didn't even know there was such a thing as a power rake. Have you guys ever seen a power rake? <laughs> this is awesome. Look at that, look at the dirties moving with that thing. And look at that. If I had the sound up here, you could hear, I, oh, this comment is great. You can hear the, 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 the tractor running if the sound was up. Okay, okay. So, so, wait. <laughs> There's more. This one is for sand flea rake. And I, I wonder where this stuff comes from. You know, the, the English is very stilted as if it wasn't quite a native speaker. I'm not sure what's quite going on there. Notice I'm on a blind carbon copy, so it's not like they're emailing me directly. <laughs> but it's actually sent to aficionado. Aficionado. What in the world are sand fleas? Turns out sand fleas are tiny little crabs that live in the sand of, uh, along the ocean, on, on the beaches. And they actually d dig down into the sand right there where the water is going back and forth from the, from the tides. And you can get a sand flea rake that you catch, you, use, you put it in, the sand washes out and the sand fleas remain behind and then they make awesome bait for surf fishing. So that's what, uh, that's, that's a sand flea rake right there. So well, you didn't expect to learn this today, did you? <laughs> now you might wonder where the icon of rake comes from and this is actually a, uh, a version of a fire rake. And a fire rake is used to uh, dig up the ground, uh, the teeth here are very sharp and use that to kind of break up the ground to create fire breaks uh, when fighting uh, forest fires. So that's kind of what rake, the, the icon for rake is built on is, is the fire rake. So quick review of what I'm assuming you know about rake already. First of all, rake is designed to automate tasks with dependencies. For example, if you wanted to make mac and cheese, you need to boil water, bypass pasta, buy some cheese. To buy some cheese, you need to go to the store. To buy pasta, you go to the store. And you can declare the dependencies between all these tasks in a basic rake file using the task nomenclature, the task name, and giving the dependencies here of where they go to. This is all basic stuff. I assume you know this already. Other things in the basic talk, we talk about uh, command lines and how we describe tasks, uh, file utilities, which is a really nice piece of rake uh, built in so you can do easy file manipulation and things like that. If you want to know more about basic rake, uh, go to Confreaks and just search for basic rake and that talk is out there as a video. 
But uh, with that in mind, let's work through a more complex example than what we covered in Basic Rake. And this example is given to us by our user, his name is Bert, and he wants us to create a directory of thumbnail images uh, given a directory of regular images. So our directory looks something like this. It's a project directory. Under that we have an images uh, directory, and in there we have a whole bunch of image files, PNG, JPEG, uh, GIF files, whatever. Uh, our rake file is there right underneath the project directory, and what we want to do is take these image files right here and produce a set of thumbnail image files that are, uh, I think, we're going to go for 32 by 32 images of the big files right out here. So that's what we want our rake task to do for us. So we're going to start off with something called a file list. I find file list to be one of the more powerful pieces of rake. In fact, I have been known to, in my scripts just to say require rake so I get the file list object. Um, here we create a list of image files and we give it the um, constructor of file list. We use this uh, square bracket and this is very similar to what the dir command uses uh, for creating a list of files in a directory. So this is kind of copied from that, but you give it a glob and every file name that matches that glob will be put in a file list. Now what is a file list you might ask? Well, essentially a file list is file list is an array that knows that it contains file names. And you can do some interesting things with file lists. For example, here's some ways you might fill up a file list. Uh, globs you've seen, you can give it more than one, and that's totally OK. You can uh, do this uh, double star thing, and that will search all the directories uh, beneath where you're starting. So you get multi-level matching. That's, again, just glob information. Um, you can do things like this where you say it needs to be either a PNG or a JPEG and it'll match both of those. So, so it'll do basic matching there as well. You can, after you have created a file list, go and include more items into it. Uh, here we, uh, so we start with PNGs but we also add the JPEGs in there. You can include a list of files and you can chain includes if you want to, that is perfectly okay. And also, this is an interesting one, after you've included some stuff, you can also explicitly exclude things that match particular patterns. So if you say, I want all the files in this directory except for the backup files. That's an easy thing to say using a file list. And what's really interesting about a file list is that it's lazy. After you've created it and told it what files are in it, it actually doesn't go out and grab those files, it doesn't actually search the directory until the first time you need those files. So if I say, let me print out the file list, at this point in time, the file list will go out and grab the list of files and, and search the directory. Uh, if you do a dot each in the file list, this will go out and grab it. If you ask for an individual file in the file list, at that point, the file list will go out and grab it. And this means you can create a bunch of file lists at the top of your rake file used for half a dozen different tasks. And the ones that aren't actively used never go out and hit the file system. So it's a little bit more efficient, this lazy nature of file list. So now we have a uh, list of images. I want to make a list of file names where I want these images to go. And I use this command, this dot path map command, and that is a file list method that goes and applies the string to the list of file names. So it will take, what this one does is, is say, okay, I'm going to create a list of files that begin with the thumbs directory. It then contains percent %n, which is the name of the file in the file list. Then it's going to add a dash thumb, and then it's going to add percent %x, which is the extension. So this will go through and grab all the, uh, so, so we start with the image files. It changes the directory to be thumbs instead of images, then appends dash thumb to the name, then adds back in the extension. You can see it like this. These percentages here all reference different pieces of the file name. Percent %d is the directory path. Percent, yeah, percent %d is the directory path to here. Percent %p is the entire path. Percent %f 
is the file, the, the file name. Percent %n is just the name portion of that. Percent %x is this extension. Percent capital X is everything else but the extension. So it's really easy to piece apart, tease apart the pieces of a file name and build up new ones with it. There's also uh, the percent %d format specifier can take a number and it says only include so many directories from either the beginning or the end. That's handy sometimes as well. So here, in our particular example, if we have a name that says images slash gem.png, we construct a new name that takes thumbs here, percent %n takes the gem down here, the dash thumb comes here, and then the percent, or the .png goes through the percent modifier and comes out there. So we can construct our target file name from our source file name with a very simple mapping string. Okay, so now we have a list of our images. We have a list of our thumbnail images. And now we want to figure out how do I actually convert an image to a thumbnail? Well, we're just gonna use uh, command line image magic. And this is the command line you would use. You would create the thumbs directory and then you would say convert to a thumbnail, a 32 by 32 geometry, uh, the source images, images slash gem.png, and the destination image, thumbs slash gem dash thumb. PNG. So that's how I would do it at the command level. So to do it in a rake file, I would just take this command and I would put it in a rake task. Now this is an interesting task. Um, this is actually a file task, and I think this was mentioned earlier today, that file tasks are a little bit special. Regular tasks in rake know about dependencies, so if you ask to do a particular task, it will run all its dependencies uh, no matter what. But file tasks don't always trigger. They c the file tasks are used to create files, and if the file is already created, a file task is smart enough not to go out and do that ex extra work. And it does it by checking what it depends upon, and if its file step is newer than everything it depends upon, then there's no reason to rebuild it. So, pieces of this. We declare it to be a file task, not a regular task. We give it the name of the file that we want to build. We, we call this the target file. We give it a list of source files. These are the files that are needed to build this target file. And then, okay, so that's the basic file task declaration. Then inside the do block, we just give it the command to run image magic and convert those files. And we put it in an sh command, and that's Rake's way of saying, just run the shell command for me, please. All right. File task, let's just kind of reiterate this. Uh, the name of the file task is the name of the file that you want to create, the name of the target file, the thing you want to be created. Now, if you're familiar with namespaces in Rake, File tasks do not obey namespaces. The purpose for a namespace in Rake is so that you can separate your tasks into different groups. But if you're dealing with files in the file system, an artificial separation into a namespace isn't gonna buy you anything. So file tasks totally ignore namespaces because they are tied to the files on your file system. A file action is only triggered if A, the file doesn't exist, or it's out of date. In other words, a timestamp indicates that its prerequisites are newer than it is, than it needs to be rebuilt. Prerequisites, same thing as source files. So we can say that a file task is nothing more than a recipe for building a target file from a list of source files. It's the whole purpose of a file task. Okay, so cool. So now we know how to take, to use Rake to declare how to build a single thumbnail image. But what if you want to build multiple thumbnail images? Well, you can, one way to do it would be just to declare multiple file tasks. And you do it like this. Each, <laughs> yeah, I, I saw someone go, hmm. Um, that was my thought exactly. This would work for two 
thumbnails. This might work for three thumbnails. Beyond that, it gets a little bit unwieldy. So what we really want to do is use Ruby to do this. Let's take this and put it inside a loop. Now the key here is that we want to iterate over the target names and the source names at the same time. So we're going to do a little trick where we take our, tar our list of target names and we use zip. How many people know what zip do? Uh, let's ask it the other way. How many people don't know what zip does? Okay, zip is a really cool uh, Ruby method that takes two arrays and takes the first element of each array and puts it in a pair and then takes the second element of each array and puts it in a pair and returns a list of all the pairings between those two files. First elements, second elements, third elements. So it'll take the first thumbnail file and the first source file, pair them together. If we iterate over that list of pairs, we will get the target file and the source file each individually, each time through the loop. Then, if I have the source file and the target file, it's easy to dynamically declare a file task that says that particular target depends upon that source. And this is how you build it. You run the shell command and pass in the source file and the target file. Nice. I only figured out that zip trick recently. I used to do really strange things like recalculating the name of one of them from the other. And I thought, I've got them both already. Let's just zip them together and iterate over it. Okay, so we're going to add a couple more just regular rake tasks. Down here we're going to have a task called convert that depends upon all the thumb files. Now what this means is when I say rake convert, it will go say, and say, okay, I need to run the convert task. To run the convert task, I need to build all its prerequisites, and its prerequisites are the thumbnail files. So this is an easy way of having a single task that will rebuild all your thumbnails for you. And then one more declaration down here at the bottom. If rake has a default task, if you call rake with no task name on the command line, it runs the default, and we say the default is convert. So that's an easy way of setting up the default. So convert builds the thumb files. Each thumb file grabs the source file and runs it through image magic. And if we actually run this, you get something like this, and I left out the, uh, the convert thing here is a little abbreviated because it would just fill up the screen. Rate convert, we get, and I've only got two images out there right now. And when we're done, we look around and say, oops, I have my images directory, but I was supposed to get a thumbs directory as well. What happened to that? Well, we forgot to say to create a thumbs directory. Now, I'm a little disappointed in this because I really wanted the convert thing to fail and say, hey, there's no thumbs directory. But evidently, image magic doesn't care. <laughs> it silently fails, and Ray can't detect it. So okay. The, the, the funny thing is sometimes it does fail. So I haven't figured out what the deal is with image magic. But, but if it were to fail, if a shell command fails, Ray would fail, and you'd get that immediate feedback. So let's go back and let's fix that. The easiest thing to do is to create a directory task. And a directory task is just like a file task, except it knows that it's building a directory. So we don't have to give it any body because the action to build a directory is just say make dir, and Rake knows how to do that. Plus, it's a little bit smart in that if you give it directory slash directory slash directory, it knows that the nested directory depends upon its parents. So it will build the entire directory path all the way down. Then we add thumbs to our list of prerequisites for an individual thumb file. So this is saying to build an individual thumb file, I first need a thumbs directory. And then I also need the source file. And if I'm out of date with either of those two, then I need to regenerate and run the body. That's exactly what we want. And once we do that and we run it, look what we get. Rate convert, it builds the thumbs directory, then it runs convert on both of those. And if we do an ls, we see we now have a thumbs directory. And if we look in the thumbs, we have gem thumbs png and ruby thumb png. Both files were converted. Woohoo! <sighs> Come on, let's cheer a little bit. Yeah! 
Notice we've taken a complex task of walking through a large directory of images and have a way of rebuilding the thumbnails. But the cool thing is, we only rebuild the thumbnails that are needed. If I had 100 files out here, and I went and I changed one of the source images and ran convert, it would go and it grab the one that changed and rebuild its thumbnail, but not rebuild all the other 99 thumbnails. So Rake is smart about doing the minimal amount of work possible. So that's really cool. And we go back to our user, Bert, and we say, Bert, hey, we're done. Can we go home? He says, uh, no. What I actually want is you to take all those thumbnails and merge them together in a single file. I have no idea why he wants this. But it makes the example work out really nice. <laughs> so we are going to add another file task. And he's, we're going to put all the thumbnails in this final.png, and it's just going to be up in our main directory. And this is the actual thing that our customer wants. He actually doesn't care about the thumbnails. He just wants this final thing. It depends upon all the thumbnails and how to build it. It's just running the image magic convert command. We give it a list of all the thumbnail files, and we just say append to final.png, and that will take all our thumbnails and build an image with all the thumbnails. I think they stack vertically then. So it gets a big, long file of all the thumbnails, 32 by 32, each of them. And we run that, and we see it actually does it. Build the thumbs directory, convert each image, append them to the final PNG, and ta-da, we're done. And notice if we say rake convert again, rake says, ah, I did that already. Go home. All right. Now Bert says, I really want, I only care about the final .png file. I don't actually care about all those thumbnail images. I want to be able to clean up the directory and get rid of those um, when I get the final product that I want. So if we think about this, we have a set of source files that are run through and they generate a set of intermediate files that are our thumbnail files, and they are used to build together the final product. So if I want to clean up the intermediate files, these are the files right there in the middle that I want to disappear. We're going to call that the clean action. There's also a, what I call a clobber action. And clobber should return your project to a pristine state, as if you had just checked it out of source control. So it should get rid of all the intermediate files. It should also get rid of any final generated files that come from that. So you, your project back to totally, totally good. Clean and clobber are the two cleanup things that Rake knows about. Now to do that, you require rake slash clean. So these are pre-built tasks that come with Rake. You can use them in, I use them in almost every project that I do with Rake. And they define two tasks. One is clean, one is clobber. And it also defined two file lists named clean and clobber. And to use them, all you do is say, OK, clean, include my thumbnail files. And actually, let's throw in the thumbs directory as well. So let's, that's a temporary thing. Once we got our final project, we don't need the thumbnail files. We don't need the thumbs directory. So those go into the clean list. The clobber list gets a list of all the final products, the things that you have to remove in addition to clean to uh, get back to a pristine state. Clean removes the intermediate files. Clobber still removes the intermediate files, but also removes the final product as well. So clean and clobber, really two useful tasks that I use all the time. OK. Bert's back. He says, oh, wait. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. Uh, the, the images directory, they're not just all in the images directory, there's also a subdirectory, or actually several subdirectories that have additional images in them as well. And I want you to pick those up as well. They should be in the list of thumbnail files that get generated, and they should be put into their proper subdirectories in the thumbs directory, and they should also be included in the final PNG file as well. Okay, so what he's done to us here, he's, he forgot to mention, there are other directories underneath images. And when we generate the images, we need to 
have matched the directory structure here over there as well. This gets a little bit tricky. So there's a couple things we have to do to our rake file now to make it pick up those things. First of all, we're going to tell rake that not only do I want all the PNG files in the images directory, I want them in all the subdirectories as well. That's merely adding a star star to the file list. Okay, that part was easy. However, the old file uh, path map command here just stuck the thumbs directory on in front of the base file name. If there was nested directory structures in that path name, we have to honor those and leave those in. So what we want to do is actually replace the directory images with the directory thumbs. And we do that in path map. This is, this is an extended command in path map. So it's percent %d. So this is still the directory. This is the directory part of it. But I'm saying that when I build up the directory part, everywhere you, every directory that begins with images should re be replaced with thumbs. It's a simple substitution command. That honors the directory structure in the original and allows us to continue. Here's our loop again. Now, instead of putting thumbs in here, I have to put the containing directory, the directory that contains the thumbnail. And I get that by taking my target file and just getting the percent %d path map for it. So that grabs the directory off of that, put that in the containing directory, and then we can list it as a dependency. We also declare it as a directory here. Now, what this will result in is if we have multiple files in the same subdirectory, we'll say, we'll run that directory command multiple times with the same name. It doesn't matter. Declare it once, declare it 100 times. It, there's only one task that's created with that. So that's not a problem. Okay. Let's run it. We say rake builds the thumbs directory, we convert the gem and logo file that are in the top level file. Then we hit this other one, this Darth. This is an awesome testing picture of Darth Vader. Um, and, but bef when we hit this one, it says, oh look, this has a dependency upon this others directory. And the containing directory would be thumbs slash other. So I have to make that directory first. Then I convert the file. Then I take all the files and append them into final.png, and then we're done. And if we look, we see that, yeah, it did create the thumbs. Should have showed what was in there. OK. So cool. Questions on that? Let's see, how much time am I got here? Got another 15 minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause. There's another section I have that's really complex. So before I go into that, I want to make sure everybody's good on this. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, because you do a clean, you get rid of the intermediate files. And then if you run the command again, it says, oh, those intermediate files are gone. I've got to recreate them. And it'll go back and recreate them from scratch and do it again, yeah. So if you do a clean, yeah, there's a potential rebuild. So you only do clean kind of like when you're done for the day and you want to make sure everything, your directory is nice and neat. Or maybe um, I do cleans a lot of times right before I'll build my gem and upload it because I don't want any of the intermediate files in some of the gems I create. So that's a good time to do clean. OK. Yeah, clear in the back. OK, uh, you're really faint from all the way in the back, but I think you asked if I could attach timestamps to the files. OK, thank you. I, I have a mic, but. but uh, Uh, 
it, once the intermediate files are gone, no, it, it tries to rebuild the intermediate files. Yeah, because once those intermediate files are gone, we don't have the timestamps for those anymore. We don't know if the source files have changed since we generated the final from the intermediaries. I suppose if we kept those timestamps around and metadata somewhere else, that might be possible to do. And I know some build systems tend to do that, separate the file timestamps into metadata elsewhere, not on the file system, but Rake has never done it that way. Okay. Okay, yes? Is there a reason to do it this way rather than using rules? Ah, rules are the next section. <laughs> and I want to talk about the differences between, we're going to go through rules, and then we're going to talk about the advantages of doing it one way and the other. And sometimes I use rules, and sometimes I do it this way, and I'm not sure exactly if when's a Bex mess it. Bex best mix of the two is. But I'll let you see both ways here in a second. Okay. Yes? Mm -hmm. Actually what it does, it just executes the rake file and the task declarations build the dependency tree. So when you load it, it declares all those and if you've, got a lot of, if you've got a lot of files, it could take, some while to, uh, take a while to build up all those dependencies. If you're dealing with, say, hundreds or you know, thousands of files, yeah, that could be a while. That might be why a rule might be better, which we'll get to in a minute. Did that answer your question? Yeah, it's actually a really simple algorithm. The, the basic engine in Rake is, could fit on a, on a large terminal very easily. It's essentially, we build it, we, the Rake file defines the dependency tree. And we say, okay, I want to, then from the command line, it picks a task. It says, okay, I want to do this task. What are its prerequisites? Looks at the prerequisites and say, okay, I need to establish those first. And those prerequisites recursively have prerequisites. So it's a recursive walk through those dependency trees to determine what it needs to rebuild. It executes the rake file to build the things, and then after all the rake files have been loaded and executed, then it walks the dependency. Uh, are you asking if you can dynamically change that dependency tree while the tasks are executing? That is an interesting question. <laughs> the possibly. I think you might get into some inconsistencies if you tried to do that. Like if, you, if I've already walked this part of the tree and then I run a task over here that changes that part of the tree, I won't pick it up. But if it changes a part of the tree I have not yet walked, then it will pick it up. So it, I think it would be a little indeterminate what you would get in that case. Okay? Okay. Since people want to know about rules, evidently, let's talk about rules. Making rules. If there are a lot of image files, you will get a lot of these dynamically generated tasks once you run. And you can get a, li you can get a list of all the tasks defined in your rake thing, rake system by saying uh, rake dash capital P. And it'll just dump out the dependency tree right there for you. So you can see it and see what it is. If there are a lot of these image files, it'll take some time to build up that tree. And whether that time is important or not, uh, certainly compared to loading a Rails environment, that's probably trivial. But it, it might be important to you if you've got a lot of files and you want this to run really fast. So that might be an issue there, creating all these tasks. So there's another way to do this. Let's think about this. What we're asking when we say, I want to build this final PNG product over here at the end. So this is what I want to generate. In order to generate one of these, I need one of these. If I don't have one of these, and we don't because you see it's kind of grayed out, if I don't have one of these, I need to generate one of these. Now, if there is a file task that tells me how to generate that, my job's done. I just use the file task. 
But if there's not a file task, if I say, if, if rake gets to the point and says, I want to build this file, how do I build that? And it doesn't find a rake file. It, uh, it actually walks through this, these steps right here. I need to build that file. Do I have a file task? Then use it. If I don't have a file task, I ask the question, do I have a rule that matches, whose pattern matches this name right here? And we'll get to what the pattern is in a second. Yeah, oh, 10 minutes, excellent, thank you. And if it finds a rule that matches that, then it looks at the corresponding source file and says, do I have a source file for this rule? And the source is derived from the gem file. So in this case, the source file for the thumbs gem thumb PNG would be images gem PNG. It says, do I have that file? If I have it, or if I can recursively build it, see where we're going here? Uh, then we trigger the rule and we do the action in the rule. Yeah, if it exists, we just, we just do the, we trigger the rule. If it can be built, we'll build the source file first, then we'll trigger the rule. So this is the recursive step right here, because we might do more rules in building this source file. Okay, so here's a basic rule, and this is, this is typically what you do when you're uh, writing C programs, right? I want to generate .o files from .c files. The rule says, if I have a file that ends in, if I want a file that ends in .o, and I have a file that ends in .c, then compile the output to the rule name. The rule name will be the name that matches, the file name that matches. And using the r.source, r.source will be the generated source file name when, uh, for matching that rule. For example, to build xyz.o, the source file would be xyz.c. So they always match. The rule name and the uh, source file always match when given a rule. And notice we pass the rule object in here as a parameter to the block. And that's so we can access the name and the source for that particular rule, for that particular triggering of the rule, actually. Now, this is a simple one, and this is, this is stolen exactly from make. If you ever do any make files, this is almost exactly identical to what make does. Okay, but rake has more complex rules, because sometimes the things you want to build aren't in the same directory as what you want, or sometimes the pattern matching isn't just a simple file extension thing, and that's certainly the case that we have here. So in this case, I can put a regular expression in here for the matching part, and then I will pass in a lambda object here to figure out how to take a match, the, the file name and map it to a source name. So this will be a mapping lambda. We'll map a rule name to a source name. So here's a, here's a real example from our system. And I declared the lambda in a separate line because truthfully, if I put this in line here, it would look, it would be confusing. So let's create the lambda and let's call it to image. This is a lambda uh, function that takes a file name and maps it to the image directory. So it's kind of the reverse of what we used path map before to do. So we, if it starts with thumbs, we change it to images and we take out the dash thumb. So it gives us back the original image file name. The pattern, the regular expression we use, is anything that begins with thumbs and has a dash thumb in it and ends in a GIF, a JPEG, or a PNG. So if I try to generate a thumbnail matching this, and after I take the name that matches this, run it through the lambda and get a source name, if that source name exists, or I can build it, then I'll trigger this action, which is to convert the thumbnail to that. And the nice thing about this is, this is one declaration. If I have a million thumbnail files, I still have only one rule. So I don't generate a lot of these dependents. So this is, this is kind of like method missing, but the rake version of it. Okay, if I can't find an explicit task to build it, then here's the default one I can use. Um, 
You, so here's the lambda here, that's in the dependency list. We also can list normal files in our dependency list, so uh, those are considered as well. And that's just normal dependency. Everything but the lambda is just normal dependency. Okay. That matches the sum. Here's our lambda here, and just additional dependencies there, yeah. Now, I um, still got to handle those subdirectories. The subdirectories were handled automatic, or were handled individually in each of the dynamically generated file rules. When I use a rule, I've got to do them elsewhere. And what I decided to do is just to take the list of thumb directories here, or excuse me, the image directories, I start with all the images, and I select out anything that's a directory. So now this is a list of the image directories. I want to mirror that over in uh, the thumb directory, so I take that and I path map it through and just exchange uh, images with thumbs. And then I get a list of all the thumb directories I have to create. And then, uh, oh, it's not here. Well, then I just iterate over these and declare each of these as a directory. It didn't make it into the slide, but that's all you have to do. So that handles the directories. So you handle the directories separately when you use rules. So who asked about rules over here? So what do you like? Rules are uh, dynamically generated file tasks. You're going to go with rules. Um, I find rules to be more complex. I find them harder to debug. Um, and truthfully, they're not quite as powerful, I think, as doing the dynamically generated tasks. But sometimes they make sense. What frustrates me a little bit about the rules is I tend to do reverse mappings in the rule. And that almost always happens with a rule somehow, and I don't know how to get away from this right now. I think that's unfortunate. I guess part of it might depend on how, how specific your constraints are. Like, mm -hmm. I'm usually okay with generating an empty year, acquiring a file type of the source file, and then screening up later. Um, in which case, the rule will just be a string. You don't need to do over again. Okay, okay. So you, you like rules, but you keep your rules simpler than what we're doing here. Yeah, yeah. I can certainly see that. And if the rule is simple, especially if it's, if it's just based on uh, extensions, like the dot .c, or dot .o depends on dot .c, that's an easy choice. Yeah, I would do it, definitely do it that way. When you start getting into complex rules, eh, I get a little bit, bit worried about them. But both work, and Rake does both of them quite well. Okay. Um, questions about rules before I move on? I have two minutes. Let me move on then. Let me finish, and then if there's any questions, if we have time. Uh, some ideas. So what would you do with Rake? If you have a powerful build system, what kinds of things will you do? Here is one thing that I did do with it. I don't know if you are familiar with the Git immersion site, but this is a tutorial on Git that walks you through using Git step by step in small individual steps. Um, it looks like this. It, uh, you've got, a z there's about 50 some odd labs in here, but they're all small. They're just like, run these couple commands and see what happens. This is built by a script file here. This script file contains the entire uh, text of that site in one big file and all the git commands that are run. And we, I don't know if you noticed here, we have actual output from git. So when I build this, I go through here, I run it through once and I generate all the example output files here. Then I run through it again, and I generate the HTML files that sucks in the example. So when I generate these guys, I'm actually running Git and grabbing the real output on real systems. And then I run it here, and I build the HTML files from there. The whole thing is orchestrated by a rake task that does that and knows how to rebuild the site incrementally. If I change one small thing, it only needs to build the portion of it that is done. And finally, I have a rake task that pushes that up to GitHub. We're using the GitHub pages, so it's easy to publish this stuff right out there. And it's a really nice way of creating a static website, a very complex static website with lots of links between files. But you change one thing, regenerate the thing, and it's out there. Rake is perfect for that kind of job. So time for a question.
One question. We got one question. Who's the lucky one question? Ding. I heard the ding. One question. Okay. No one has a question. Awesome. That means I explained really well. Thank you for having me here today. It was fun. Thanks.